sufficient one. The God who is, who is to come, the Lord of a valley, bright and morning star. <clears throat> Rose of Sharon. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord is good. All the time. Amen. 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 You're welcome to this live broadcast. Praise the Lord. This is our school of marriage. GFA, GFA means Great Finishers Assembly. Hallelujah, situated right here in a better chapter, in a better Lagos. <laughs> Praise the Lord in Nigeria. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It is well with you in Jesus' name. Amen. I know that the good Lord is going to meet everyone of us, the very point of our need in the name of Jesus. Amen. Please, you can share. As we're on, invite your friends who are married. This is, uh, this is uh, School of Marriage 1 plus 1, both for singles and for married. Invite your friends to join online. Praise the Lord. Amen. And I'm sure that the good Lord is going to bless everyone. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Trust God to say a few things. Many that I, I probably don't know. <clears throat> what I mean I don't know is that the Lord... Holy Spirit, you know, you can't, you can't put him in a straight jacket. 
can use any opportunity to talk to people, even outside what the man of God has prepared. So I'm just all his for him to use <clears throat> to touch us. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And so I trust God that the Lord is going to bless every single one of us in Jesus' name. Amen. And as we go on, probably I need to <clears throat> also let you know um, that um, I'll, I, may not, I, may, I may have I may have to talk about one or two things about about my books as we go on because some of the things I'm going to be addressing. Uh, uh, points to the book or we can get some things from, from the book itself. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's very, very important and we give God the glory. Amen. You know, I, I probably, uh, I should probably be, be talking about what is marriage and all that, but well, I, I feel at this point in time, we, we'll get to talking about that. You know, even in, even in my talk, even if I'm not mentioning, even if I, we're not taking this as a major topic, you know, as I go on, what is marriage will be expressed through my teaching. It's important you will get to understand some basic things. It's very important. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We need to understand some basic things concerning <clears throat> concerning marriage. We just need to be, understand basic in life. Basic things must be understood. Basic things how to survive. Basic things to build a house. Basic things to have a good health. Basic things that you must know. It's inevitable, you know. We just must know basic things of life. Praise the Lord. You have a vision that must be basic things concerning that vision. And that's the truth. But it's just that it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate that many people, <clears throat> it's unfortunate that many people um, go into marriage and, and uh, go into marriage and don't understand what marriage is all about. And that's the truth. Many people rush into marriage. Three quarters of people rush into marriage. I'm also submitting that I entered into marriage and didn't really know what marriage was all about. You know, you just fall in love. You know, your mind thinking about marriage, having a partner, you feel lonely, you want to marry now. So you have a friend, or the Lord leads you, either by vision, you know, contact one way or the other. Maybe somebody introduced you and just say, oh, maybe this is the babe and all that. And then you did what you did. You clicked and then you just got married. You just know that in marriage, there will be kids, there will be children. You just know in marriage, there will be love. And what I mean love now, you're talking about sex because uh, in the first instance, you know, you don't, you don't think of marrying someone and think of not having a sexual relationship with the person. So, you know, these are some of the things that we have, majorly in our mind, to have kids, to enjoy ourselves, you know, and all that, and you're married. So, now here, you have husband and wife, okay, uh, uh, going to live together, working together, you know, doing things together, and all that. And then, while, after a while, not too long, crisis uh, begin. And then, what happened? Many people don't make it. Many people don't make it. To a lot of people, to a lot of people, praise the Lord. They don't know how to handle. They don't know how to handle. They don't know how to handle. Excuse me. Hallelujah. Amen. They don't know how to handle crisis. And then, uh, you know, the, the, from one trouble to the other. The marriage is gone. Why some people just manage? Why some people just manage manage uh, the crisis for a long time? Hallelujah. Amen. Okay. So uh, today we'll be looking at um, how to handle crisis, and in handling crisis, we we'll have to learn how to establish clear guidelines for handling crisis. So I am actually teaching on establishing clear guidelines for handling crisis. Establishing clear guidelines for handling crisis. It's very, it's very, very important. I just feel like starting from this, you know, because I, I understand uh, for quite a long time now, I've been preaching on marriage. As a matter of fact, right from when, 
we started myself and my wife, or my wife myself, started to pastor um, Fountain of Life Church, a better chapter. We pastored that, that a better branch. Praise the Lord under the tutelage of Pastor Tayo, Pastor Bimbo Dukoya, Pastor Bimbo Dukoya of the Blessed Memory. We pastored for nine years. <clears throat> Marriage was uh, one of the legacies that we got from Fountain. The next is leadership. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. And uh, Right from that time, I have been preaching, I have been talking on marriage. No matter how I talk on leadership, whatever I, I preach about, I find myself talking about marriage, bringing marriage, um, marriage into it. So it's very, very important that uh, uh, we, we, we understand this. It's just a little bit of introduction and we need to clear some things. So I was just trying to say, um, throughout my years of experience, uh, before the Lord now asked me to to start the school of marriage, uh, that was in 2007. 2007, the Lord asked me to start the school of marriage at um, um, around October. Say so I should start the school of marriage because uh, many ministers, many people, they've graduated from Bible Bible colleges, Bible schools. They know the Bible. They know the Bible, and yet their marriages are suffering. And then we started. Praise the Lord. So we've been on. So we started school of marriage, and then school of marriage came on. And we had to get into the Facebook. We also do a school of marriage physically in church, but you know, church now is at home. And we thank God for this broadcast. Praise the Lord. So I'm trying to say that my years of experience since 1996, when it comes to handling marriages, you know, and all that. Now, I'm not, I'm not staying here. I'm not telling you here that I'm perfect. No. We've had our own talks, myself and my wife, and we thank God so much. Just like Apostle Paul could say, we ourselves will boldly say that the things that happened to us have happened for the furtherance of the gospel, of this preaching. And the Lord has helped us to get ourselves established enough to be able to teach others so that they don't go the way of others, the way a lot of marriages went. And as I'm talking right now, I know there are some of you, you're going through a lot of marriage troubles. You're going through a lot of marriage troubles and all that. As long as you pay attention and you follow the Lord, you follow the Lord, as long as you follow. I have not seen anybody following the Lord. I keep saying it. I have not seen anybody following the Lord and he misses out. Now, if an individual person is asked to follow the Lord by the Lord himself and you follow the Lord, praise the Lord, who is the sure ground? Praise the Lord. The sure person to follow for life because he's faithful. You know, as long as you follow and as long as your partner follows, marriage crisis, marriage challenges will be reduced to the barest minimum. I tell you the fact. And there will be success for such well, you know, one of the things that intrigues me or gets me surprised is two people, they are born again, they are filled with the Holy Spirit, they have Jesus as Lord and Savior, they speak in tongues, they have their Bibles, they love themselves, but after a while in marriage, they begin to, they be, they begin to have problems. They start having problems, and the next thing, somebody wants out. Somebody wants out out of the marriage entirely have had people but i also thank god because the school of marriage has helped many people to stabilize i tell you and they have testimonies today and i really want to give god the glory that i have quite a few of my friends on the facebook and i know the testimony they call me they share with me what's happening in their marriage what's happening concerning their spouse things are getting better you know and all that and i give god the glory for us in Grace Finishers Assembly, success, marriage success, is just as close, I don't want to exaggerate, it's as close as 97%. It's just as close as 97%. Why? Because I teach on marriage. God has helped me to take them through a lot of things. And today, not only me teaching on marriage, God has helped me to raise many more leaders who can teach on marriage. In short, to surprise you to know that there are some singles, special singles, I'm trusting God that God will give them their partners, praise the Lord, who can teach marriage, who have been established in the present truth, and, and I know that they will not be deceived concerning 
who to marry or who not to marry. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As I said that, like I told you earlier on, I'll be introducing some, some things just before we go into how to establish clear guidelines for handling uh, crisis in marriage. Okay? When I mention on how, who, to fall, who to marry and who not to marry, uh, this, is, uh, 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 this is my fourth book. This is my fourth book, my first book, my, this is my fourth book, it's called How Not to Fall in Love. My wife uh, wrote the foreword, you know, uh, to this book. This is the first book. This book deals with anger. It says, anger helped me. Our stories, my story and that of my wife is here. In short, I, I, I think about 30 incidents of anger in this book. Almost half of those incidents relate to me more more than there's one with myself and my wife but that one was a very long one but i thank god these stories are here and uh, the scriptures are clear this this book is to take you to jesus is to lead you to the bible to know how to deal with it is a lot of people go into marriage and uh, uh, they have not dealt with their attitude people go into marriage and don't help. You, you can marry a very quiet person you marry a very quiet brother you marry a very quiet pastor very very quiet very gentle you know, I come, I've come to understand that somebody can be gentle and yet it is not the gentleness of the Spirit of God, the fruit of the Spirit. Now, I want to say something. There are people that are born naturally, you see them very gentle. You see them, they look peaceful, but they don't have the fruit of the Spirit that is called, uh, uh, that's called peace. You know, people are like that. I was, I was like that. I was, I, I, I in all, among all my brothers, I seem to be the the most gentle person, very gentle. But then, if you if you step on my toes, something erupts from the inside of me. Praise the Lord. And then it was, God was waiting for me to get married to properly deal with this in my life. He tried a few times after I, got, I gave my life to Jesus. You know, I've been in the crucible of God many, many times over the issue of anger. And God warned me. God warned me. God warned me and told me God told me that if you don't desist, I will take you home. And you know, we like to go to heaven. Uh -huh. We like heaven. But when God says, I want to take you there now, many of us will, you know, the way well, the way he came to me, God sent an angel to me, I, I knew it was, not time, it was not your time. But the Lord warned me. I said, if you don't desist, I'll take you home. All that is in this, in this, in this book. Too many people don't know how to put anger under control. Anger is good. Anger is anger tells you you are hot. But you see, you need wisdom to know how to handle it and to deal with the situation. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Well, uh, these this books are on, uh, on Amazon. Since uh, right now, um, um, because of the lockdown, although it's going to be lockdown, is going to be eased off uh, gradually tomorrow from 8 to 6, 6 a.m., 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. Praise the Lord. But you can get it on Amazon. Just, 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 just type in, type in my name, Christopher Ikebwa, all my books will come out. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, this is the fourth book. This fourth book is How Not to Fall in Love. This is for, for all singles. This is for special singles, those who seem to be late in getting married. Nothing is late before the Lord, okay? So you, you, are, you are afraid, you are past, uh, you, you feel that uh, nobody is coming. Um, close to 40 now. We have had people about 40 who have had them married. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. As long as they follow the Lord and follow the Lord very well. Amen? Amen. But then apart from following the Lord, you need to learn some things about this book. It's for everybody. For widows who want, who want to resettle their life. Widowers who want to resettle their life. Uh, for divorces that are properly, that everything about divorce have been properly ascertained that this person is free you know and all that uh, let me just say one or two things because i mentioned something now somebody will probably say somebody probably will say oh, oh you mentioned divorce divorce getting married that no he's not supposed to you know a lot of time we follow we follow church doctrines much more than what the bible says you know and all that god loves divorces he does not hate them he hates divorce but he loves divorces now, I understand there are some people that, yes, they divorce for the wrong reasons. 
The divers for the wrong reasons and all that, and they're going to give account when they get to heaven. Yeah, I don't. It, that's not my. That's not my. That's not me. That's God. God is the judge of all. But some also divers for the right reasons. You say why? Why for the right reasons? You can imagine a man that is married, married for years. He's married for years, and then uh, he he decides to leave his wife. After after leaving his wife, you know, and all that, and then the wife tries as much as God to reconcile with him. Talks to the church. Talks to the family. And uh, they call him. The man refuses. The man stands on, the, uh, 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 on his decision. You know that no, he's not marrying her again. You know, and all that. Not for the case of even adultery. It's not the case of adultery that makes a lot of people uh, uh, to divorce their wife. There are a lot of issues, multiple, multiple issues, issues that don't even count anything. They don't hold. They don't hold water at all. Okay. So, so this lady, wife haven't done everything required in the Bible. Go read Matthew chapter 18, verse 15 to 17. Jesus clearly said it there. And the Bible says, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, the words of God shall, will be established. In other words, don't take decision. Don't take decision to walk out of your marriage or to leave your marriage when you have not been led by the word of God, by God himself, to go through what Jesus Christ stipulated in Scripture. In other words, from one, you know, you don't use one aspect of Scripture. Praise the Lord. And so, so the lady does everything possible and tells the church and the man refuses and the man goes ahead to remarry. And the man has decided that it's not going to come back and he gets married. And then if it does happen to ladies, they leave their husband and they get married and somebody is saying because this man or this woman belongs to church, she has to stay until they hear that that man is dead. Can you imagine? Who is going to kill the man? Who is going to kill the woman? You know? And all that. And here is a young lady, a lady whose years are wasting away. And somebody is saying she cannot, she cannot remarry. But the Bible tells us that when an unbeliever departs, the other person is, is not bound to that law. Now, what do I mean? You say, well, he's a believer. Oh, he's speaking in tongues. Yes, but there are places where a believer start acting carnally, start acting as, as a child of the devil. When a, when a child of God that is called a believer stop listening to God, stop following the word of God, and puts his emotions above God's word, and he goes out of his marriage, and all that. He is treated as a non-believer. That's what Jesus Christ said. He should be treated as a non-believer. It also happens to the, to the woman. But the Lord will help us today because I need to establish some background. It's very, very important. Please, if you have any questions, if you have any questions, just drop just drop your questions on, on, on our page. Praise the Lord. We'll be able to answer. Yeah, we're ready. I'm ready to and as, as we go on one of these days, I am going to take I'm going to take a study on, on divers. I'm going to take a study on divers. There was a time I took, I took a study on divers. You know, for, for, for uh, I, I was writing on Sunday, Sunday News Watch. The Lord told me to take, to, 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 to write on divers. You know, and the Lord ministered to me. You minister, you minister on marriage. You teach on marriage. And you need to be equipped. You need to be equipped. When issues come like this, how do you handle them? How do you help people? Wow. So as I went into scriptures, I decided not to read any book. Now, I am not, I am not boasting, I am not being proudful about it, you know. I decided not because Holy Spirit is our teacher. So what, I took my Bible, I went through the Old Testament, I went to the New Testament, I went back to the Old Testament, and the Holy Spirit now began to teach me some basic things. God knew right from the Old Testament that there will be divorce. He knew, yet he hated it quite well. Okay, now I know that. Now, but there, 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 there are issues that can be set right that can necessitate a divorce. Praise the Lord. Uh, a man beats his wife, beats his wife, uh, you know, uh, 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 blue or green or whatever they how whatever you, the expression you say, and then ends in the hospital. And that's the manner of the man. The man is a beast and he wants to kill. I, 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 I'm not going to have any daughter. 
I'm not going to have any doctor, even if the man has paid a dowry of one million naira. And I say, no, stay there and die. No, I will take that, my daughter. Now, I will try to reconcile them, and then I will keep, let, let her be separated for a while. Let us work on the man to see whether he's going to repent. If there's no sign of repent, repentance, and it's going to take time, I will not be very quick to release my daughter to him. We have had cases where ladies have died. Died. In, 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 their, in, in their marriages. Just in, in, the, in, the, in the sense that where Otifeni, Otifel is your husband. You are the one who said you will marry. Yes, we do make mistakes. Fine. Must you allow your daughter to die? There are cases where, where the men have been murdered. Men have been murdered by their wives also. Okay? So for me, I will take my daughter. Keep my daughter with let me let me find out the case. I'll talk to the man, counsel, and then see whether love can click again. Because sometimes when crisis come between husband and wife, and you are better be careful uh, coming in. Because sometimes, sometimes you discover, sometimes you discover that uh, you know why why you're on the side of one, two of them, two, two, two of them are in love, secretly in love with one another. Another praise the Lord. There was a case I had about the family of a man who made sure that the man drove his wife away just because the man did not have any the man did not have any issue no child coming from you know and they needed they needed children they were saying they needed children but no he must give us so they persecuted her she left oh can you imagine that means he was on their side but guess what love was brewing in the air they were meeting secretly <laughs> meeting out meeting in the hotel meeting somewhere else and guess what God miraculously visited them and there was a baby. The lady told me when we met sometime, many years back in Luke, when my wife went there one of those days to Vantineta. Hallelujah. Okay, so we want to be careful. But you see, please, that we're not on divers today, okay? We're on how to handle crisis so that we don't lead to divers. But the issue is this. Go and read Matthew chapter 18 verse 15 to to 17 and then add verse 18 it says whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven whatsoever you lose on earth shall be loose in heaven in other words when you have completed this process there are steps to be completed many people don't complete this, the, the steps and they are out of the marriage and they go ahead i believe that a lot of divorces that, that many people will answer then some that we have crucified God will say no, that this man did the right thing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It is well with us Amen. in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So, um, so this is how not to fall in love. This will guide you. It's also an indirect way uh, to say, to tell you how to fall in love. When you know the several ways how not to fall in love, it will be very easy for you to know how to fall in love. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. All these books are very cheap. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay. Hallelujah. Yeah, my 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 um my third book, okay, my third uh, book, praise the Lord. There's still one more. Hallelujah. Oh, volume one. Okay, this is volume two. Okay, this is volume two. Uh, there's still um this is how how to overcome sexual temptation. You know, um God is leading me to address some things in marriage, some things in the body of Christ. God is leading me to address those things. That's why my books. My books are sometimes in the story format, messed with revelation, messed with truth and scripture. Practical things, practical things. The first one is on anger, dealing with the issue of anger. Many of us carry, we carry anger into marriages, into our marriages. And then guess what? A lot of people's marriage is gone because of anger. Praise the Lord. Now this is how to overcome sexual temptation. This is volume two. Volume two says additional things you must know. It says satanic merchandise of sexual immorality. People don't know that people uh, that Satan is helping people, using people to transact, to transact a kind of business, and and that business uh, is affecting their marriage. It's a transaction. Satan, Satan is a business person. A, he wants something. He gives you something, and he takes something from you. He takes the whole lot from you. He takes the whole harvest from you. He can give you a seed. And take the whole harvest. Yes, Satan understands the principle of seed sowing. You understand? You sow a seed, but when you go to reap, you reap, you reap great harvest. You don't reap the same seed. You reap multiples of the seed. That's that's what happened. That's what happened. Some people have lost their marriage. Compare compare marriage 
to little anger. Compare marriage to little impatience. Compare marriage to one's um, selfishness. Compare marriage to, to greed. Compare marriage to fornication. Now compare the benefit of marriage, the home for God, where people will be recruited, children will be recruited for God, for his kingdom, for kingdom agenda. Compare just one thing, Satan woman, he gives that thing to, 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 to affect people. Praise the Lord. There are people today that adultery, adultery, you know, has scattered their marriages. There are women today are going through, going through a lot. I can't, I can't, I can't, I, 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 I listen, I, I, this is really true. This is really true. I have examples, examples upon examples upon, upon examples. Very painful thing. A lot of women have gone through, many women especially have gone through a lot of things because we have cases of many men who commit adultery that you have the women. And if you look at the reason why some married people commit adultery, or you, you actually, you actually be able to trace some things back into the life of their husbands or into the lives of their father, their fathers, where they are coming from. So adultery is carry over of lust and fornication that people have not overcome. Hear what I said? Hear what I said? What, what I, hear what I just said? Let me repeat again. Adultery is a carryover of lust and fornication that people fail to address, to overcome. It's not just addressing, overcoming it. So there's a carryover. Remember the, the, the Israelites. The Israelites were coming, the Israelites were coming from Egypt to go to go to the to Canaan land. But a lot of attitude. Now, God's mercy. Remember this the sacrifice a lamb each for every household. God's mercy. God's mercy overshadowed them. But on the journey in between Egypt, in between Egypt and 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 uh, and Canaan land, praise the Lord. Their attitude started to manifest, and God started dealing with them right there. And only few people make it. Make it now. Those were the those were carryovers. Too many people have carried things over. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so this book is good. Some people read it. I mean, many people have read this book and they testified concerning it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, Hallelujah. We have, I have volume one. I have volume two. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, this is my uh, fifth book. I hope I hope I'm counting well. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, anger number one. How to overcome sexual temptation, volume one, volume two. Praise the Lord. Then uh, how not to fall in love. Then this one, seven points agenda. This is my fifth book, seven points agenda. This is classic. You know, this is this is this is my love. You know why did I say so? Oh, God specific specific dealing with me is about this book. Praise the Lord. Amen. In 2009, while waking up, I won't forget. I wish I had the exact date. But I know it was in 2009. God, while waking up, God asked me, what did God create marriage? If I ask you what did God create marriage, you will tell me what I told the Holy Spirit. I told the Holy Spirit for companionship, for sexual intimacy, that's enjoyment, and then for procreation. But the Holy Spirit did not stay there. He asked me, say, what else? And what else? I kept quiet. I couldn't answer. And then the Holy Spirit gave me other points that formed this seven-point agenda. In short, the first one he told me blew my mind. And it made me realize that this is the major reason why, you know, many marriages are broken. And he said, God created my when When I could not answer, he gave me the fourth point. But eventually, that fourth point was not supposed to be number four. It's supposed to be number one. I said, God created marriage to please him, to give him pleasure. Wow. In other words, when you get married to your partner, you get married for God. You don't get married for yourself. In other words, you, what you do to your partner must be God's pleasure. So if we all of us have this in mind, that what, what I will do to my partner, what my partner does to me, she keeps it in mind so that she, she's, she'll be respecting God's word. So she, she's actually holding God's word. My wife will be holding God's word, you know, on high esteem, Praise the Lord. And, and dealing with me appropriately according to the word of God. That's the problem. 
We no longer deal with ourselves appropriately according to the word of God. I don't see anybody surviving with, with, without the word. People go to hell without the word of God. So how do you think that your marriage will be successful without God's word? Now how do you think that your money can give you a good marriage without God's word? How do you think that your family background, the family name, came from a very rich family. Some people marry because, no, 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 no. It doesn't give you security at all. It's the word of God. Praise the Lord. So all these seven points agenda is here. This book, it was its pastor, Nomfi Odukoya, my pastor's wife, my pastor's wife, rather, pastor Nomfi Odukoya, that wrote the forward. You just need to, you just need to read it. Um, the, uh, volume one and volume two of how to overcome sexual temptation. Um, 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 the forward was written by my first father, my first mentor and teacher, Dr. John Esuga Apami, Dr. J. E. Apami. Praise the Lord. It's in Zaria, um, the, the general vassal of uh, Christian Teaching Center. Zaria, praise the Lord. He was one that led me to Jesus and grouped me after Christ. Praise the Lord. Pastor Tao mentored me, you know, um, towards ministry and then on marriage and give God the glory. So I'm blessed with two fathers. Praise the Lord. Two mentors, two teachers. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So I'm a man that has two pastors. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I have two pastors and I give God the glory. And I'm proud of them anytime. And they're, out, they're also proud of me. I've had opportunity to minister in their churches. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Even when we started church here, I went to Pastor Tao has called me to minister the fountain of that church. And then Dr. John has also called me to minister there. And I give God the glory. I give so I have great support. Hallelujah. Amen. Your blessing, Jesus. And please do this book. You can get them. You can get them from uh, from Amazon. You know, the e um, especially the, the e format that's the e-book, you can get them, download them. You know, pay some amount of money, download them, and then in case you 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 live in, in Lagos, that means with this with this um, um, lockdown, the easing of this lockdown, okay, you know they are relaxing the lockdown. Praise the Lord means that within the hour you can get them, you can get them from us. So if you need, please just uh, just just indicate, say something. Praise the Lord. Please let us know, all of you, all of you online. Please, wherever you are, we are viewing us from, let us know. If anywhere you are, just mention your name and say, viewing from so, 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 please. Praise the Lord. We appreciate all of you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please, those of you that are sharing, you can start a watch party. As you are listening to me, you can start a watch party. Just click on the button, share, and then several others of your friends will, 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 will come on board. Amen. Say marriage is good. You can enjoy your marriage. I'm enjoying my marriage right now. Praise the Lord. I'm enjoying my marriage. Praise the Lord. And I give God the glory. And I'm not preaching this in, in the absence of my wife. So you know she's here. And then uh, praise the Lord. We, we thank God and we, we give God the glory. And also my my my, my kids. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. So establishing clear guidelines for handling what? Uh, for handling. Crisis is important. We, we, we need to hear this. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Okay. Hallelujah. Amen. There was a case of a man, <laughs> praise the Lord, who said to a minister some years ago, uh, he, he told him that him and his wife had been married for the past 30 years then. And in all their years, they had they had only one argument. It started the day they were they were they were married, and he said to this present moment the argument hasn't stopped. That's a very serious one. But thank God they are still together with the argument. Many people with one crisis they have gone. They've gone. I pray in the name of Jesus that God will keep your marriage. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. we must learn to deal with crises the right time. There's a time. To need it in the bond. There's a time to do that. There's a time to do that. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay. Every marriage has periods of argument, friction, and conflict. If you say you have not, or you said you have never had any argument with your wife, then your marriage is only. 
<laughs> you marry the zombie. Zombie, you zombie. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Tell him to go from the go go. Tell him to go. He go. No argument. No. Every marriage has its own argument, periods of argument, friction, and conflict. Do you know why? The reason is because those conflicts and frictions and argument, they are part of it. It's like it's like the fire that brings out the soup. Oh, come on. Is anybody talking to me? Is anybody listening? It's the fire, like the, like the fire that brings out the soup, makes the soup, the soup sweet. But many people don't know how to combine fire and combine ingredient. ingredient. It's not many people that enter kitchen that come out with good soup. Oh, come on. Hello? It's not many people that enter the kitchen that come out, come out with good soup. And that's the truth. Many people don't come out with good soup. Everything is complete. Ingredients complete. Fire is there. The stove is okay. The gas cooker is okay. Everything all right. Water, everything available. But they come out. Pot available. But what is in the pot does not look like soup. Because they have no land. Praise the Lord. <laughs> they have no land. Amen. I cook a lot. So I give God the glory so I can tell you a lot of things. Praise the Lord. Okay. So, so, so the issue I'm saying now, those arguments and the frictions and the conflicts, they all work together. They all work together. I've had, I'm sorry to say this, I've had, I've had, I've had, I've had some men of God. I have never had any problem with my wife. I just swallow, you know, there's a way you can swallow, swallow, uh, is it saliva or swallow air, and then it just goes through your Adam's apple, like it's, like it's a bolus of pepper, and I just swallow it like that. Praise the Lord. And I'm wondering how. I'm wondering how. We don't have to. Let's quit uh, uh, impressing anybody. I'm glad to say I've gone through conflict in my marriage. I've gone through it. Myself and my wife gone through it. But I thank God God allowed us to go through it. Today, we can teach better. Yes, Amen. Amen. We can teach better. Yes, I believe that God allows. Have you seen God? I know what God does. God looks for people who have problems. God looks for people who have problems. And he, turn, he turns them around. Like I say, he turns them up to use for his glory. They can teach better revelation. Oh, come on. <laughs> yes, sir. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Give God the glory, okay? I'm not boasting, but I'm just, I'm just, I'm just thanking God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Greatest saints hit some difficult times in their marriages, in Bible days. Abraham, in Genesis chapter 16, he had problems. What? Sarah called Sarah then told him now imagine I read the place and it shocked me that Abraham had already got into Canaan in spite of the fact that God has already you know God has told Abraham I'm giving you this land but at that time Abraham wouldn't have been able to possess that land with just only Sarah and the housemate when they, even when Isaac came forth they couldn't have, and there's Ishmael, they couldn't have been able, five of them, they couldn't have been able to possess the Canaan land. That means God was taking them through a process. You see, when God gives you a word, there's a process. There's a process. Just follow him in the program. Don't jump ahead of him. Can I have an amen? Amen. Don't jump ahead of him. Amen? Amen. 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 So Abraham, Sarah came to Abraham and said, and said, uh, uh, um, 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 Please go into my into my maid. Go into my maid. Preventure, I will have a child from, from, uh, from you know from, from, from her. And Abraham just really didn't argue. Went into that. And then guess what? That problem started between Sarah and then Hagar. Between um, um, Ishmael, the son of the maid, Hagar, and then the son of Sarah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That's crisis. And guess what? God gave the solution. God gave the solution. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God will always talk anytime we have crisis. But we are the ones who don't listen. A lot of marriages are broken. Not because God wants... No, no. God does not want them to... Didn't want them to break. He broke because they refused to listen to God. When you put your emotions there, first of all... Even if you said, yes, oh, pastor, even where the man beat the woman, yes. If the man had listened to God, he wouldn't have, beat, he wouldn't have beaten his wife. 
If that woman had listened to God, she wouldn't have, she wouldn't have, uh, 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 she wouldn't have done what she did. So there's a listening. When there's crisis, God will, God will profess solution. If God is always speaking, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I pray that we'll listen in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And you that you're going through your marriage trouble, that are going through marriage trouble right now, please listen. I believe the Lord is sending me to you to hear this message. Don't ever get to a place and say, my husband will never listen again. You are not God. Don't ever get to a place and say, my wife can never change. It's a lie from the pit of hell. The enemy has put it in your mind. There is nobody God cannot break. We use some scriptures. How come, how come Jabez changed? How come Jabez changed? Jabez got to know from the word of God who God was. So who cannot change? More so if you're a child of God, you are born again, you have the Holy Spirit. Of what essence is the Holy Spirit? Is the Holy Ghost inside of you? Of what essence is the Holy Spirit inside of you? That is the anointing that is within us. An anointing that is within that teaches, that teaches us. That teaches us. Don't mind my King James. There's anointing that is within that teaches us. There's anointing that comes upon for service. There's anointing that teaches us. There's anointing inside that transforms us, helps us to become like Jesus, come to conform us, to become like the image of, of, of God's Son. Praise the Lord. So what are we doing with it? What are we doing with it? Why do we allow emotions to run us out? We have treasure in the 18th verse, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. So, but this treasure is in the 18th verse, that the excellency of it will not be of us, but it will be of God. And we're told in verse 6 what this treasure is. He said, God who commanded light to shine out of darkness and shine in our heart. The light that will bring about the knowledge of the glory of God in the presence of Jesus. That's a greater light. We have it. It's just that we don't know what we have. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This will bring me to what I've been sharing. These three things that the Lord told me some time ago. And I've told my members and I'm sharing everywhere. Define who you are. Define who you, who you are. Define where you are. Define who is, who is the most important person in your life. The most important person in your life should be God. Don't allow anybody to run you out. Of God's word, you turn because my wife offended me, my husband offended me. Then you, you yourself went and you are doing, you are doing, you are, you are actually acting badly. Now you, you, you are actually working against God. You are actually, you are actually disrespectful to God because you are not following His word. Don't take the laws into your hands. It's in this book, Seven Point Agenda. It's in this book. Don't take the laws into your hands. God told us. I, I told you that. Marriage is, marriage is a divine assignment. God sent you on, on errand. God sent your husband on errand. And that's a fact. So who sent you God? Who sent your husband God? Okay, in your marriage, God told your husband, love, love, to love you. In that marriage, God told you, submit. Now ask me that you should love your husband because you should submit to your husband, respect your husband because he loves you. As long as he continues to love you, you submit. Please show me in the scripture where it is. We have added logic. Where we put logic in marriage, it overruns uh, runs us out of marriage. Love is unconditional. The woman's love to her husband is based on the respect that she has for the husband. So it's also unconditional. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Man, the husband is just is just her. What makes him hair is not money. It's not that he's rich. Quit, quit abusing your husband. That is worse than infidel. Even if God said that, God did not. Show me where God told you to tell him that he's an infidel. I know a place where the Bible says, Say to the wicked, they shall not be well with him. God did not tell you. Woman, God did not tell you. Stop saying it. Hey, I was than an infidel. God did not send you. You commit sin. Let God say it's not you. But guess what? That does not make him to lose his respect because he's a man, he's a head. We'll get to talking about that. Praise the Lord as we go over. Hallelujah! Amen. Amen. So, we see the issue of Sarah. We also see the issue of Isaac. Remember Isaac? Isaac was old and his eyes, eyes were getting dimmer. He could not see properly. And he now called Esau. You know Esau and Jacob. 
They were twins, right? Yeah. Good. They were twins. And so he called the elder. And so um, Esau. Esau was a hunter. Esau used to bring that food to him, meat to him, season it. Praise the Lord. Bush meat, correct one. And the guy can cook, put the pepper, put the onions, put the garlic. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Roast everything. Correct, guy. So the man has eaten, I'm sure. I'm sure it's Isaac would have eaten, um, 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 you know, things like that. Good relish from, um, from, from, from Esau. And he probably would refuse eating his wife's uh, meal. So he said, okay, come. Make me that venison. Make me that your special. So that my soul will bless you. I don't, wanna, I don't know when I'm going to die. And then who had? Rebecca had. And then now called um, uh, Jacob. I can imagine. That was crisis. Is that not crisis? That's crisis. Because when everything blew up, it was, it was too late. When Isaac had already released blessing on uh, Jacob, the supplanter, the trickster. Can you imagine? The 419 collected the blessing of the firstborn. <laughs> well, that's not that day's story. Amen. Amen. So that's crisis. Crisis. Praise the Lord, argument, frictions, and conflict. Uh, you, you cannot do without having them in marriage. But it's just as time goes on, when you when you begin to grow together, amen, these things reduce to the barest minimum. And it was it will be like as if it's it's almost getting to zero percent. And that's the truth. Praise the Lord. I pray that marriage will grow. Amen. I pray your marriage will get to that point. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We have quite a lot of a lot, a lot like that. We have quite a lot like that. We have Jacob also. We have also um, Moses. We have Moses had crisis in his marriage. David also had crisis in his marriage. Remember, Micah, praise the Lord. Uh, you know, disdained him because he was dancing. He danced because of act of covenant. And the woman came, looked at him, said, "Look at you. You disgrace yourself." Look at you among all those our mates, among our house boys, disgrace yourself and all that. David said, See, I, I will even do worse than this, self. And then guess what? She was she, she she was a woman at that time, died without giving birth to any child. That's that's crisis and a lot of things that David went through. Okay, so we're looking at uh, establishing clear guidelines for handling crisis. Prisoner number one. Determined to resolve every conflict rather than settling for peace at any price. Number one, determined to resolve every conflict, right? Rather than settling for peace at any price. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So, what did I say you should do? Come on, come on, let me hear. Determined to resolve, resolve every conflict rather than settling for peace at any price. I'm like, okay, let me let okay, let me just have peace. Okay, okay, it's alright. Okay, let's just have, no, it's not settled. It's not settled. A made up ground is not a solid ground. You cannot compare a made up ground to a solid ground. That's the truth. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. You pay a lot for a make up ground. You pay a lot. Praise the Lord. The ground that is made. Alright? So, you must determine to resolve every conflict rather than settling for peace at any price. In other words, you are entering marriage, you are married now. Better determine to resolve every conflict. Now, but the question is this, yes, it's good to resolve conflict, but many of you are trying to resolve conflict in a wrong way, so you are no longer resolving it. You are mob you are, you are mobbling everything. You are creating what's in a row. You are, you, are, you are multiplying the issues because you go in there with an attitude. So you already failed. Somebody who's trying to resolve crisis must be a peaceful person, first of all. Or oh, did you hear what I said? Yes, sir. Even if you are angry, you must allow peace so that that peace will be on top, will overshadow your anger. Otherwise, you're not able to resolve it. The Bible says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, that means mature. 
Alright. Okay. So, I'm going to give out five, is it four or five things here now? Okay. A, four. A, we can withdraw by adopting the attitude. Well, I can't win. So what's the, what's the use? In other words, I know my wife. I know my wife. I remember some years back, a couple they were having issues where we, where we had church before. They were having issues. I was very serious. And I had to go to their house. And I was just there, trying to talk to the man. This man, this woman, tough. But the man also will now meet up that toughness by beating the wife. That's bad. Please never again raise your hand to beat your wife. Never again, no matter the situation. Don't ever do it. Don't ever do it. She's not a man. You didn't make her a man. She's a woman. Don't do it. It's not, it's not, it's not proper. If you've done it, tell, apologize to your wife. Take your wife out if you have never done that. Make up with her. Tell her you're sorry. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, now let, let me go. Somebody will say, what? I know you guys. I know what about the issue where a woman is beating the husband. Yes, I know. There are some places where a woman will slap husband. So I'm also talking to you as a woman. Don't do that. I know a case where a woman kicked, kicked open the door. The man, the man entered into the door and she gave the door a comfort. And the door kicked, came out. The, the woman is twice, twice the size of the man. The man ran out of the house. Praise the Lord. So please, whether it is woman beating the uh, husband or husband beating, it's bad. It's not, it's not proper. Praise the Lord. Don't take the Lord into your hands. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay? Alright? So, so some people will say, okay, let us, okay, let, okay, fine. Let us settle. Let us settle. There was a case. Oh, it's a life story. It's a life story. Two people that got married. Got married. This, this woman has labored, I mean, labored so much to bring money to the table she labored so much i'm telling you the fact and then the man got a job and when the man got a job he got his car he got his car and it was it's my car and will not allow his wife to drive the wife that had been suffering that have paid so much that have suffered so much that have used used her money to take care of the man, both of them. They were trusting God for the foot of the womb. Crisis. Somebody will, somebody will, somebody who comes, who's like a customer to them in the office. That lives not too far. Lived not too far from where she was. Now husband is not taking her in the car. Husband, and then somehow the man will bring her and drop her. Her husband got angry about it. We are not providing money for her to take taxi. Now somebody, and there was nothing between her and that, and that, and that customer. You will not allow your wife to drive your car. That's really bad. So guess what? They will settle. Somehow the man will get angry. You know, sometimes the man will get angry and will fling a hot plate of, 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 of food who knows, maybe rice or whatever. Fling it at her. Can you imagine? Meanwhile, she was the one that cooked the food just because she made, she made some statement. Don't follow a woman to talk. You will mess up yourself. Praise the Lord. Okay. So, so one day, the lady escorted, everything seemed to be calm. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. Make up peace. Made up peace. Oh. Okay, you're going to work. Okay, bye. See you. See you later. Escorted. And then before the man could come back, the lady had packed all her things and gone. Packed all her things and gone till today. I've not had that they are together any longer. It's been years now. We tried to do what we could. But the lady refused. Praise the Lord. May God help us in Jesus' name. So don't withdraw. Don't withdraw and have the attitude of, well, I can't say, uh, let's do, okay, fine, let us, let's, let it be. No, solve it properly. Get it done properly. B, we can yield to conflict. I'm talking about these are, these are several ways we respond to, to conflict. Several ways we respond to conflict. Com, uh, several ways we respond to com, conflict. We can withdraw by adopting the attitude of, well, I can't win, so let it be. What's the use? 
Okay, or let us, okay, fine, all right, we'll make peace. Okay, we'll make peace, but it's not in your heart. B, we can yield to conflict, giving in order to get along. Uh -huh, that's it. Giving, okay, we want us to settle, okay, we'll settle. We have settled, go. No, I'm forgiving you, but the person has not forgiven you. Don't ever carry that attitude in your mind. If you have the attitude now, just carry it last day and go before the Lord and drop it at his feet. And go and meet your husband, meet your wife. Say, listen, let me tell you, since I told you I forgive you, I really have not forgiven you. I had that, I have that soul within me. But I have re I've forgiven you, I've released you. This is what you did. Please, let's work together. Again, let's start on you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. See, one of the ways we respond to com conflict, you know, on our own. We can compromise in conflict, but the danger is we might compromise compromise important principles. Sometimes you just compromise. It's almost the same thing I'm saying. You just compromise. It's okay. It's okay. They beg you. Oh, it's all right. Oti too. Oti too. Oti too. No, it's okay. Oti too. It's finished. It's settled. Praise the Lord. How oh, the government? Oh, Oti too. Oh, good. You know, uh -huh. whatever language. Okay, you just compromise. And then you're going along, going along with your wife, going along with your husband. But in the real sense, you just compromise. We have good compromise in marriage, but there's bad one. There's bad one. There's a compromise you can compromise because you see the way your wife is doing. And so there's there's you see the way your wife is doing, and so there's there's you know there's uh, you know, she's tough and all that. And you know, if you go, if you go with her on that tough matter, you will spoil it. So you mellow down, and then in the process of in the process of mellowing down, you, you you are going on your knees to talk to God, and somehow God touches God touches her. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. And the matter is settled. D. We can resolve a conflict by facing the root problem and getting to the bottom of the matter. We can resolve a conflict by facing the root problem and getting to the bottom of the matter. You get to take it? Let me take it. We can resolve a conflict by facing the root problem and getting to the bottom of the matter. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Please let me take it again. We can resolve a conflict by facing the root problem and getting to the bottom of the matter. That is just it. It's a key. If you never get to the bottom or the root of the problem, that conflict is not settled. Because it's, it started somewhere. When you plant a thing, there's a root. When it starts growing, there's a root. It's going down. It's, it's, it's going deep down. And it's also coming up. The one that's coming up is overwhelmed, but you're not seeing the root. But you're going to come to the root because if you don't uproot it, it will, it will keep springing. So this is the best. This is one of the this is one of the best ways or the best in handling crisis. You you need to put your emotional pains aside. Put your pains aside. Put your feelings aside. I've always said that. You see, we are all human beings. There's every tendency that once you are hot, once you are hot, your feelings goes so high on top. Like, like on the plate of your head. It's there. Everything you do, the pain, the pain is there. Now, that feeling you have put on top, you have put it on top of God's word. Now, when you are having that kind of pain, try to control it so that you can allow the word of God to simmer up. If you allow the word of God to simmer up, to come up, to float up, and put that feeling under, you will not carry a wrong step. Can I have an amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. This is the best way to approach conflict. All the other ways are co cope out. You cope. Cope out. You cope. A, B, C is just coping. D is the best way. They don't make for a growing relationship. A, B, C don't make for a growing relationship. Now let me say something now about growth. I will take this second one and then we'll close on this. We'll come back next time. By God's grace, it's going to be weekly now. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. All right? Okay? So, something was said here. I, 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 
I'm, I'm getting something. I just want to, I want to bring out something here now. Okay, good. Let me, let me, let me just say it. Okay. Now listen to this. Growth and maturity develop when we face issues, not dodge them. Growth and maturity develop when we face issues, not dodge them. In other words, if you dodge issues, you will never grow. You will never be matured. People think that they are mature when they get angry because it is their right to get angry. Why? Because, because their husband really hurt them. Yes, you have right to get angry. But remember, God says, be ye angry and sin not. We don't look at the word and sin not. But we look at, be ye angry. Yes, I'm a human being. I can get angry. Yes, God knows you're a human being. You can get angry. And in short, God put the anger there. How? Emotions are already built up inside of us. You know, and all that. You know, when, when we're born, as we you shall right from our mother's womb. A baby can be rejoicing in the mother's womb. Didn't you hear what the Bible said about Mary? When Mary visited, visited um, um, Elizabeth, or, uh, was it Elizabeth that visited Mary? Uh -huh. Elizabeth visited Mary. And then when there was that greeting, the baby in the womb of uh, Elizabeth, I was said, leap for joy. Started kicking, leap for joy. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So emotions have been wired on our inside. And God has, anger is good to let you know your heart. They say anger is a bad thing. No. It's like saying electricity is bad, but please cut all the wire from your house so you don't have life. No, electricity is good. But when we don't know how to manage it, then that's when it becomes bad. Same thing with anger. Mm. Hello? I, I, so when you dodge matters, you don't grow and you don't mature. But well, you see, when you start, when you the day you get married, you have become you have become baby couples. Oh come on. Talk to me now. You have never been married before. You have become baby couples. Even if you've been married before and you and you and you, and you say your new marriage. The person you marry, you married now is uh, uh, has not married before. Let me tell you the truth. She has just she has just brought you back to a kindergarten because you're going to start from that level that she is to bring her up. And if you don't know how to manage manage her, there'll be a problem. And that's happened to a lot of people where they are married three times to not be your portion. Amen. If whatever thing you're going through in marriage and that to not be your portion. Do not marry again. It will not be your portion. Amen. I'm praying for you that God will stabilize that marriage in Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. Some people think it is by getting remarried that everything gets it. No, if they still carry their portfolio. They have not learned to put their feelings under the word of God. Mm. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we need to grow. God told me some time ago. I was in the bathroom. The Lord ministered to me and said, and said that. Um, Thank you. And said, many people, one of the reasons why their marriage is broke is because they remain babyly married. So when I had that, I started to laugh. They remain babyly married. When you marry, you just come into, you are just like a baby that will learn. You don't know many things about me. How many of us, we didn't know many things. So all that I know now, I never knew. Praise the Lord. Okay, so some people they didn't grow. So you, both of you need to grow together. If you if you don't grow together with your partner, it's a very big problem. Some some husbands have grown spiritually to a point, and then their wives are not growing. Some their wives have grown spiritually. Husband, so it's it's like an, another form of unequal yoke. Unequal yoke is not only between a believer and an unbeliever. We can have an equal yoke in marriage. What I mean, or you, or you, I'm not saying that I'm not, uh, I'm not talking about compatibility here. I'm talking about the issue that they ought to have grown together, but one has grown uh, spiritually, spiritually more knowledgeable, a lot of the mentally and all that. Why the, the other person is there? So it's like a man just walking like this, and you know, uh, let me borrow the, uh, 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 a language, uh, uh, vernacular. The man don't rack, he don't rack. So it's like this. This is how it's. The wife, the wife is down, or the husband is down, the lady. So he's trying to do like this. Is it balanced? It's not balanced. I pray in Jesus' name that you be balanced with your wife, with your husband. In Jesus' name. So you need to grow together. How? The word of God. Okay, now let me take this one now. Because I'm going to end on this quickly. Number two. Remember we're talking about what? Hello. Establishing clear guidelines 
for what? For handling crisis. We have looked at the first one, determined to resolve every conflict rather than settling for peace at any price. So you must be determined. Determination means to put all into it. All your effort, you, that's your, just, just, be, just be a problem solver. When people don't make up their mind to be a problem solver, that's the problem. You know, it wearies, it wearies a man if the man is the only person that's trying to make peace and the wife does, does not like to make peace. Oh, marriage do not last long. Sometimes it's the woman that's trying to make peace all the time, the man does not care if, if the marriage wants to spoil any spoil. But both ought to learn how to make peace. Amen? amen. And listen. Can I have an amen? amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, so two, deal with conflict issues as soon as possible after they occur or you sight them coming. Oh, I love that. You need to have an eagle eye. You need to have a prophetic eye. You know, it takes growth. You are growing to a point now that you begin to envisage that problem is coming. I want to avoid it because it has happened before. This has happened between me and my, and my wife. It has happened between me and my husband. So you look at it, then you, you know how to handle it before, before the problem lands. That's the truth. Then it means you are matured. This is teaching of maturity. This is how to handle, how to handle crisis. Establishing clear, clear guide, guidelines of how to deal with conflict. It's to mature you. So it says, deal for number two. Deal with conflict issues as soon as possible after they occur or you sight them coming. As you sight them coming, you have an inner eye. Problem is coming. How am I going to handle it, Lord? Give me wisdom. You are already prepared. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, our pastors, our leaders, they prepare us into spiritual warfare. One of the things I was trusted into spiritual warfare, Ephesians chapter 6. But a lot of times we are not prepared for marriage. They, are, they don't teach us warfare for marriage. <laughs> they don't teach us just say when you love him, you love when people live, live peacefully, live quickly, the Lord will help you and do this, do this, do this. So are they really prepared to no. you? No. Uh, love your wife. You already know you're going to love her. So it's in you. Uh, you submit to your husband. You already know you're going to submit, Abby. So they've not taught, they've not taught you anything. New. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay. So the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. All right. So this is where the man. Now listen to me. This is where the man, the leader of the home, and the one responsible for the climate of love and freedom. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Must take the initiative for resolving the conflict even if his wife has started the whole thing. Now listen to me. Please listen to me. All men, hear me. Don't miss this. And you wife, don't take it out on your husband. And say, did you hear that? No. Man, God has made you head. Whether I didn't know about marriage, you that's not the issue. Now that you have become head of your wife, you are better go and learn everything that is possible for that headship to be successful. It's true. Head. Look at, look at me. Look at yourself. Look at my head. My body is here. Do you know that every part of my body cannot function without my head? It can't function without the head. Jesus is the head of the church. Do you know Jesus Christ cannot function without his body? Do you know? Which means the capacity that the head has, the head shares it with the entire body. The wisdom that the head has, the head shares it with the rest of the body. Same thing spiritually, same thing. The same thing with all of your money that you have. You must share it with your wife. With every knowledge that you have, you must share with your wife. It's very important. So, in dealing with crisis, you must be number one. You must be number one. I give kudos to women right now that are listening to me. That you have been able to save your marriage because your husband wouldn't want to listen to you. I started it. But with wisdom, you have been so patient. With wisdom.
Praise the Lord. Amen. You have learned to deal with the situation. And I thank God for your life. Praise the Lord. You no, know, it looks like you are acting at the head, but you are, you are just a helper, so you are helping. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, this is this is wonderful. A man's feeling may be so deep. Sorry, a man's feeling may be so deeply hurt by his wife's attitude or actions that he may feel disinclined to take any initiative. But at such times, he should remind himself of the command of Jesus Christ in Ephesians chapter 5. Husbands, love your wives. In other words, your wife, your wife has done something that don't merit, that seems not to merit your love. Now, I said your love. Uh -huh. I said your love, not Jesus' love. I'm going somewhere now. Praise the Lord. There's a love that God has put inside of you that is called his love. You have your own love. But you see, you must love, your love must be loved through God's love. Now, if your wife has hurt you badly, and you have that deep feeling of hurt, don't withdraw the love of God that God has put in your heart for her. That's what is that's what is saying. As they heard, you are expected to be spiritually matured enough to release the love of God to touch your wife. Can I have an amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. It may take a while for the truth of this scripture to sink to one's heart and damage emotions. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But it must be faced. Once there's one, once somebody's heart and his emotion damaged, it takes it, it takes a time. But then this matter must be faced. Amen. Amen. Lastly, under this, God not only raises the standard to unbelievable heights, but he provides the power by which we can reach up to it. In other words, I don't know how to handle my wife. Uh -uh, it's not new to God. God has already provided, has raised a standard. What's the standard? It's his word. Go to his word. God has the wisdom. Go and ask God, God the wisdom. God, what do I do? Don't take decision. Don't take any decision without consulting God. That's where the problem is. God's word is his constitution for us. And we have constitution of marriage also in the generality of God's word. And for God's love, there's no condition for a man to use his love to, to, to love his wife. This is very important now. This also that I just shared may also go for the wife. If you have a husband who seems not to care, who seems not to be on the spiritual platform, but you know some spiritual things, God expects you, don't put the laws into your hands. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And First Peter chapter 3, verse 1 to 6, says, tells the woman what to do to save that marriage, to bring that man back to God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You are blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. This is where we're going to stop for today. Next time we're going to take three, four, and, uh, and five. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I believe that, um, that God has helped you. Amen. God has blessed you. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus. And that the Lord has ministered to you. Yes. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to acknowledge the presence of quite a lot of our members or friends who have joined us, joined us during this uh, live broadcast. Praise the Lord. Uh, Amen. Amen. We we'll give God the glory. Thank God for Pastor Soibi Okoma John. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. She's really been following. Oh, Pastor Lukman Bankole, Larry Waju, God bless you. Happy birthday. So, today, today is his birthday. So, Pastor Bankole, happy birthday. Happy birthday. The Lord increase you. God give you uh, many more lives. Amen. Fulfill life. Answer your prayers. Amen. That special prayer. Amen. We're going to dance together. We're going to rejoice together. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. For you and your wife and your household. It's already done. Yes. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Sister Justina. A Feni, Erin, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. My wonderful and beautiful daughter. 
Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Sharp, sharp daughter. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, yes, so oh, another daughter of mine. Um, that's um, uh, Elizabeth Oshin. Praise the Lord. That's um, a light on. Amen. I like the way she put it here. Ola Oluwa Keton. That's beautiful. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Jesus, I know you're watching with your husband, your household. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amber, Sister Amber Osunde. I know that God has sparked up that Amber, that fire in your life now. Praise the Lord. Amen. And do not go down in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, Bishop Olusha son, God bless you. I've been a, a minister in his church. And when um, and it was his daughter that uh, that got married many years back. And I thank God they have they have they, they have the fruit of that marriage. Amen. I thank God for your beautiful wife, your entire family, and your ministry online too. The Lord bless you for Amen. for for coming on board. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord bless several others that have been watching but didn't indi indicate. God keep you all. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's share this message. Let's help to save life. Please join with me and several other people preaching on marriage to save life, to save marriages in the name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you, keep your home. I pray for you Amen. in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Your desire right now for your home, Amen. for your wife, for your husband, Amen. for your children, Amen. I pray be granted Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. I come against every door that has been shut against your, 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 your business, against your prosperity, Amen. against your peace Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. I declare God's counsel. I cut every plan of the enemy against you. Amen. You will not die before your time. Amen. Your marriage will not be written among those people that Satan has his said divorce case. No, it shall not be in the name of Jesus. Amen. It shall not even be on the on the list of pending uh, pending cases in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Your name will be the that of God that this marriage is successful. Amen. So shall it be Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And I also want to thank God for, for Mr. Henry. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That's also watching. I miss all of you. I miss all of you. I miss I miss all the GFA members. Praise the Lord. God bless you all. I may not be able to mention names. Praise the Lord. But I know you are all watching. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. And especially at this time, let me just use this again to thank every member of Grace Finishers Assembly that supported uh, my vision for us to do palliative. For, for church members only. I wish we have all the money. I wish we have all the money to do for many people. Praise the Lord. But because the times are hard, we could only do for few people in church. Praise the Lord. God bless you and keep you all in the name of Jesus. Please remember, uh, right from tomorrow, uh, there's, they are easing off the lockdown. But let's be very careful. I would just want to, I would just want to create your indulgence just assume that like the lockdown is still there so that you don't just cast off restraints and jump on the streets. If you need to go out, go out when you know it's so important and you need to do your business and quick, no, no, no visiting of friends anyhow. Maintain the social distancing. Make sure you wear your face uh, mask. mask. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Make sure you have two if you're driving. Make sure you have two in your car. Make sure you, at least you have enough for your children also. It's very important. Although we have been told that you don't wear the face mask for a very, very long time. So you'll be able to determine where you're going to let it, let it out of your nose so you can have fresh air. It's very important. So you don't bring breathe in common outside as opposed to breathe out. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It is well with you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Please don't attend any party. Don't attend any party. Don't attend any party. Don't attend. Please, I beg you. It's very, very important. The Lord will keep you. The Lord will keep me. Amen. God gives you. God will give you plenty of testimonies. Amen. In Jesus. Don't hesitate to share your testimony with us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless in Jesus' name. Amen. Shall we share the grace? According Amen. to the good and the Lord that's upon us, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fresh of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. For the Lord, the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus, has set us free from the law of sin and death, and so sin shall not have dominion over us. For the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead 
dwells inside of us. He quickens and mortal bodies to the glory of his holy name. Amen. God bless. I'm your host, Pastor Chris, the Cape Senior Pastor of Grace Fiduciary Assembly. God bless you. See you. Um, that will be on Tuesday for our Bible study. Thank you. God bless.